Hi, my name is Anthony Mackay. I'm the teacher of the Commercial Vehicle and Equipment Level 1 OEAP program. Let's take a walk in the shop. So as part of our engines and fuels course, one of the main concepts that we have here is our 6.6 .6 liter Duramax. It's a good representation of our V-block engine design. We're going to be looking into the high pressure fuel rail system. And of course we have it mounted on our rotating engine stand so that we can actually flip it upside down. We'll remove the oil pan and we're actually going to look at our connecting rods, our pistons, our crankshaft, and we're going to run through and check the valve train once we have a cylinder head off of it as well. So we have a 2007 model year Cummins ISX. We're going to be using this not only for our engines, but also for our induction systems. We have our turbo situated here, but this is a twin camshaft overhead engine. We have one camshaft that runs our injectors and we have one camshaft that runs our valve train. So the students are actually going to be learning how to set up the valve train on this. The weight of these engines when they are full of fluid. We're talking anywhere between 3,700 to 4,200 pounds. These are the engines that are actually in our commercial trucks running up and down the road. I like to refer to these engines as organized chaos. When we think about it, we have thousands of explosions happening inside this engine that is actually what's propelling these trucks down the road. So again, when the students are working on these, we will in turn be removing the cylinder heads on these and stripping it down to the block so they can actually see the internal components below the head as well. So in referring to our dual overhead cam setup here, we can see that we have valve train for each side of this engine. The camshaft that's on the left is actually running our injectors, whereas the camshaft that's on our right is running our valve train for the engine. So our exhaust and intake valves, it also controls our exhaust brakes. We can see our solenoids here for the exhaust brake. So our commercial vehicle and equipment level one apprenticeship program is broken down into seven courses. One of those courses is brakes and wheel ends. So as for one of the labs that the students have to do in brakes and wheel ends is they have to disassemble the hub assembly. They're going to check for wear or damaged components. They're going to talk about the actual issues that could arise from an improper setup. When we're talking our wheel end assemblies, we need to have one to five thousandths of an inch end play. So the students actually disassemble them, inspect, they reassemble, and then they actually confirm their measurements with a dial indicator. So as part of our trade practices course, they had to learn how to use dial indicators. So they set them up, and then they actually confirm that they have the proper end play of that wheel assembly. So aside from taking our end play measurement, as part of the wheel ends course, the students also have to take a face runout measurement. So they'll set the dial indicator up much the same, except we're going against the face of the hub, at which point they're going to rotate the hub recording their actual positive measurements on the dial indicator and their negative measurements on the dial indicator. They're going to speak to what could cause these possible deflections in the face of the hub, and we're going to note any defects that this hub has. We also have our old McCormick and our Air National here, as well as a couple of other tractors that are going to actually lead into the students who are coming from the agricultural industry sector. So the students are actually going to be pulling the injectors out of our McCormick and our Air National, as well as our field distribution pumps. We're going to be dismantling the pumps reinstalling after we rebuild, and we're going to be actually doing nozzle opening pressures against our injectors, reinstalling after we rebuild the injectors, and bringing these tractors back to a running operation. So these tractors themselves, although they are old, they are still permanent pieces of equipment that the students will actually see in the actual job force. So in this section of the shop, we have our running stand engines. Now these two engines actually reach to our heavy duty side and our agricultural sides. We have our C4 CAT engine, which would be normally found in a generator unit or light duty industrial machines. It has a Huey injection system for our fuel distribution. We'll be actually looking at pulling the injectors out of this and actually doing readings across the injectors for that. Behind me we have our running Kubota stand engine. So again, the fuel system that's on our Kubota, much the same like our McCormick and our Air National because of our groups. Some students may be working on the stand engine of the Kubota, some may be on our McCormick and some may be on the Air National. So another one of our courses in our CVAP Level 1 program is fluid power. So when it comes to fluid power, we're talking about hydraulics and pneumatics. The main component for our fluid power lab is going to be our case uh, bulldozer. When we look at this, it may be a slightly older piece of equipment, but the fluid power system that's on this is still very relevant to what we're working with today. We have our track system driven off of hydraulics as well as we have all of our hydraulic cylinders and lifting devices. So the students themselves, when they come to the program, we're not only going to be taking calculations of what these cylinders are capable of putting out pressure-wise and for lifting force, but they're actually going to be plumbing into the system and actually taking pressure readings while we're running the machine. 
So one of the major parts of our drivetrains course is single countershaft transmissions. So we have four brand new Eaton six-speed transmissions to facilitate that part of the course. Students will actually be taking these transmissions apart, timing the gears, and reassembling these transmissions. While they're apart, they actually have to do the gear ratio calculations between each gear to calculate their actual final gear ratio at the back of the transmission. So all of our industrial electrical machinery has been installed with panic buttons and motor starters. The motor starters allow us so that if the power goes out and this device is left on, it will not turn back on when the power comes back on. We've also installed new guarding around all of our hydraulic presses and our manual presses. These motor starters and panic buttons are installed also on all of our items inside our cage. So when it comes to safety in the shop, we have reached out to Ottawa Fasteners to fulfill all of our needs. So the items inside this cage, because of the nature of them, we actually have to have hands-on instruction. So one student and myself will enter the cage, they'll go through the demonstration, and then they'll actually do the procedure. They require 100% of our attention when we're using them. So for our theoretical side of our program, we are actually using Electube, which is our digital learning platform. So through Electube, we have our course broken down into the, obviously our seven courses, and then we have modules pertaining to each of those courses. What is great about Electude is it is a very intuitive program. So anything that I create, because I can also add my own content into what Electude has and build on what it is. So I've taken what was previously in Electude, added content into it, and created a tailor-made commercial vehicle and equipment level one program. So the students themselves, I can break it down into individual student tracking, where I can actually see the success and progress that the students are having through the modules. So if there's a student who's struggling, I can see it on the daily exactly where they're struggling and where we need to address any issues that we can solve. Each of the students have access to their own laptop for this program. So while I'm presenting on the television up front, they can also be following along on their laptops in class. They also are able to take these laptops home so that they can move further into the modules or if they actually want to relearn and take notes from what they have. So part of our program is to introduce students to using ESTs, so electronic service tools. We've gone out and acquired a Maximus 4.0 top of the line Matco scanner. This has full wireless capability, so we can connect to the vehicle outside while it's running, have our scan tool inside, but I also have the ability to cast it to our smart television so that students can also take part as to what's going on on the television at the front of the class. So our commercial vehicle and equipment level one apprenticeship program has three sections to it. We have students from truck and coach, agricultural and heavy equipment, and these students will actually be able to branch into each of those as they progress into a level two program. One thing to note is that the students who complete this program, because they've had their placement, they're actually entering the workforce as a level two apprentice. Now this program is broken down into seven courses. We have trade practices, we have fluid power, we have engine systems, we have electrical systems, we have fuel systems, brakes and wheel ends, and drivetrains. Now amongst those different courses, they're going to be learning everything from fundamentals of tooling to actually doing engine diagnostics. One thing I'd like to note is that this program couldn't be what it is without the generous support of our industry partners. They have come out in a very large way to support this program and get it off the ground, whether it's through providing placements for our students, items for our labs, and learning materials for our actual in-class lessons. One other thing I want to note is the great collaboration between the four school boards and Kempel Campus.